The biharmonic capture adds weights to the character's geometry that are associated with the different skeleton bones. You can now use a new node to adjust the capture weights with a brush workflow. For this creature, the goal will be to get the top of the mouth to not be influenced by the lower mouth joint and to tweak how the feet area is weighted. So we're going to start by adding a split node. We'll bring the geometry over here and we're going to go and add the body and the tongue into that. So now we can feed that first area off into the biharmonic and the tetan bed. Now what this is doing is it's splitting off the body and the tongue which we're going to have as weighted geometry and all the other body parts we're going to treat a little differently in a, in a future step. Uh, but that's an important first thing that we need to do. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tab, put a visibility node down. We're going to place that here and we're going to choose the tongue and just hide that and that will allow us to focus on this part for now and we can switch out and work on the tongue after. Now let's go to the rig pose and we're just going to press clear. Uh, we'll come back and, and, and work with that again later. Let's just start clean like this. And let's go in and we go to the rig pose with the um, handle tool there. We can go and click the jaw and open that. And that's where we see sort of the problem we have, which is the upper part is going with it. We're also actually uh, moving part of the stomach with it as well. So we want to fix some of those things first. And uh, we'll do that with a special node called Capture Layer Paint. Now we put that into the network here and we'll see all the weights that we have um, sort of distributed here. We want to uh, visualize this specifically by visualizing a selected region, which nothing is selected right now. Uh, but if we come up here and we pick, let's say, neck two, uh, we'll see that that currently is influencing only that area there. And we want that to influence the upper area of this and a lot of the head because we'll rotate a lot of that with that neck two. We've got a paint icon which would allow us to go in and start painting. So if we start painting, um, as it gets to red, that means the influence of that particular um, weight is starting to grow. So if we were to go uh, into here and start weighting that, you see how now these things are not being influenced anymore by what's happening underneath. They're being influenced by the neck two joint that we're doing there. And so the key now is to get in there and really do this properly here. So I'm going to do sort of the back of the head. Now to get this mouth area, um, we're going to go a little smaller in here. I'll just get in and start doing that. And painting that weight in there and get this part here and this will get us closer to what we're looking. Now this isn't red yet so we need this to be red. Now as we're working if we want to at any point we can go to the rig pose and we can go and say well okay how's all that? See it's still got some of that and the neck too we now see how that's influencing things and we see it's it's getting a lot of that, but it's not getting this area here. We go back to the capture layer paint, and that pose we just created is our new pose to help us paint. So we open the mouth a little bit there, makes it easier to get in and get some of this stuff. Um, there we go. Now, this is getting quite a little more drastic, but that's actually what we need, because if we want that to be have a rigid relationship there. And we also want to get actually inside the mouth because if we're inside the mouth, a lot of that is covered uh, right in there. So if we get that in there, go a little smaller. We're using the middle scroll button to, to make the, that, uh, this goes up and down with the middle scroll button. Um, and there we go. So we're getting that to sort of do its thing.
second, we can go back to the rig pose. And there we go. So that brings up that. And that's good. And then we go jaw. And that's not touching the upper mouth anymore. So that's good. So that gives us the kind of thing that we're looking for. And you can probably spend a little more time refining that and getting what you want. Now, once you have that and you want to, you know, now it's got a little messy there. You can right click on here and go smooth final. Um, and now you can create a, a bit of smoothing between um, that and the other areas. So that's a, a useful tool to sort of just get some fall off into that. Now, if we go into here and we pick any other joint, so let's say we want to pick the um, the jaw, uh, we can see that the jaw is influencing um, here, and we can get a little more in there, but it's also influencing what's going on underneath there. So what we can do is we can reduce the influence of that on this area here if we don't want the belly to be influenced by raising and lowering the jaw. Now, of course, it's also being influenced a little bit by the lower mouth, um, but not that much, so that's not really as much of an issue there. Uh, and so we can go in, and there we go. That's, oh, it's still doing stuff. Still doing stuff down in there. So we probably want to come back here, and again, with the reduce, uh, just really get that some of that out of there. And go do the same with the, go back to the jaw. And there we go. So, you know, the, this process is basically about going back, there we go. So the, the body's not being influenced as much by that. Now, because of the biharmonic, a lot of the rest of this is actually fairly well covered. One of the other areas we want to look at is the um, is the toes. So if we come back to here and we uh, look, for instance, at the left toe, um, there's not as much influence as we would probably like. Ooh, we just reduced that. We want to paint that. Um, and then we want to get just a little more influence of the toe area, just to make sure that the toe is actually really the one doing that. And then we can do the right toe to just just do that a little bit. And this is just important because uh, later, if we go to the rig pose, um, let's rotate the knee. We rotate this. We just want to make sure that that's all working with the toe nicely. Um, and we can, we can do that. And, Make sure that's working nicely. Now that would also be parented to the ball, and that would work as well. But but it's good when we do the reverse foot setup later. We want to um, we're going to want uh, the toe involved in this. And if we come back to here, uh, we can also go into here and say smooth final. And just smooth that out a little bit. Go back to the left toe and smooth that out a bit as well. And if we want to paint a little bit more in there, we can paint a little more in there. So that's the basic workflow of capture layer paint, and you can go and do that with any joint. Uh, you can pick any joint off of here and say, let's you know, let's see how uh, the pelvis is influencing, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you can you can see how that is doing, and if you feel the need to sort of adjust it. So it's a matter of just taking the rig pose, moving things around, making sure you're happy, uh, and then smoothing it out accordingly. So once you have um, the body done, the other thing we can do is go to this visibility and say non-selected primitives. And then what we can do is go down to the capture layer weight and um, just look for instance at the jaw joint and just uh, you know see what we want to do there if there's any adjustment we, we feel we need there. Uh, maybe some smooth final. And uh, then if you go in and you grab that jaw, there we go, it does sort of works on the tongue as well. So there we go. So that uh, once you've got that, you can take this and bypass it. Uh, and then now you're looking at the final uh, rig with those, with those various poses. So you'd go into the rig pose and just begin testing things out and making sure that you're happy with where things are. And if so, then we're ready to move on.